Hello everyone! Today in the evening we will fight again against Adma's character of the world around us in the literature, history and culture in general. This time we will uh, go into the very broad and very controversial but at the same time extremely interesting topic of Crusades. Uh, the book I want to talk about today is the work entitled The Glory of the Crusades by Steve Weidenkopf, who is actually the faculty in the Christendom College located in Virginia, which was uh, established in 1985, as I remember correctly, by Warren Carroll, who was actually quite famous and very productive uh, pro-Catholic writer and Mr. Weidenkopf uh, cultivates this tradition, so he is work on Crusades. One volume work I need to emphasize, so it's only one volume book, uh, is still uh, having the very pro-Catholic uh, character, that's why it's entitled The Glory of the Crusades. And it's a very important position, especially nowadays, because it presents different point of view on these armed pilgrimages, because crusade, crusades themselves were nothing more than armed, armed pilgrimages of medieval uh, chivalry, their servants and other volunteers who initially uh, started the expedition into the Holy Land, nowadays territory of uh, geographical Palestine, and uh, la later, of course, Crusades took part in also in different regions of the Old World. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, one volume work, and author finishes the last Crusades, according to him, he describes very briefly this time, is the expedition on Vienna by Polish king Jan uh, III Sobieski against Ottoman Turks, uh, very uh, successful victory over Ottoman forces that saved Vienna. It didn't bring much to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but uh, saved Austria. Uh, and the interesting thing is that author tries to uh, uh, make a very professional rebuttal uh, for very common myths and misunderstandings and understatements that were accumulated for many centuries around the uh, armed pilgrimage called Crusades. Actually, he did a good job as a historian showing uh, the amount of bias from different sites accumulated in uh, scholarly and also uh, popular works, also in art, in uh, playwrights, movies, popular books, novels. So this is a positive part of the book that author took a stand to give a response to this bias that was accumulated for many centuries. So this is good uh, work to be familiar with when we want to go into polemics in between different groups uh, which see crusades from the different angle. Uh, the main uh, author whom uh, Mr. Weidenkopf uh, criticizes the most is of course very famous and uh, very, uh, I would say, knowledgeable. Uh, British diplomat and Byzantinist medievalist historian Stephen Ransiman, because he's famous, published in the early 1950s uh, three volume A History of Crusades, is written from the perspective of the Byzantinists. So, uh, everyone who is a little bit familiar with this uh, part of history of the world, especially Crusades to the Palace, geographical Palestine, that uh, fort of the crusade actually uh, betrayed the uh, main idea of uh, these armed pilgrimages and turned its blade 
against other Christians, this time Orthodox Christians. And actually, Byzantine Empire, one can say without so much exaggeration, was in 1204 AD mortally wounded by the sack of Constantinople by uh, cru uh, crusaders and later division and gradual, gradual decomposition of Byzantine state. And uh, the brutal criticism of the work of Stephen Ranciman by Mr. Weidenkopf can be understood because Mr. Weidenkopf had to, had to select properly his reference point. So as extreme view of Crusades, he's very positive and very honorable. I mean Mr. Weidenkopf's view and the opposite one the very critical view of the Byzantinist, British Byzantinist, Stephen Ranciman. Very uh, nice uh, presentation of different point of view. I encourage all readers to uh, get familiar with uh, these two books. Uh, the flow of the one volume book of Mr. Weidenkopf is the fact that he uh, just omitted many fragments of many important events connected with uh, Crusaders' activity in geographical Palestine, like expeditions of King Amalric to, the, to Egypt, that, took that they took place between Second and Third Crusade. But I think author decided to do so due to the limited volume of his work. Another very, very important and quite funny for me anachronism that I found in this book was the statement of Mr. Weidenkopf that he, cannot, he couldn't understand why Mr. Ranciman called in his work that was written in 1950s the sack of the Constantinople by the uh, Crusaders during the Fourth Crusade the largest tragedy of humanity after a fresh experience of Second World War. If one thinks a little bit, uh, one uh, realizes quickly that in early 50s of course, people were aware of the massacre of uh, civilian populations that took place, especially some particular groups uh, of people in the Second World War. But what was more uh, focused on a new post-war Cold War reality that was uh, then, at those times, taking its shape. And the focus on the massacre of civilian populations during Second World War, more political, cultural and also moral focus on this event happened in the second half of 1970s. It happens to many young historians that they commit a sin of the anachronism like Mr. Weidenkopf did. But, but okay, these flaws didn't, uh, uh, I would say, didn't subtract the, much value from the book entitled The Glory of the Crusade by Steve Weidenkopf, its worth reading position as a good, posi as a good uh, I would say, content to be familiar with when we want to join the polemics uh, around the phenomenon called Crusades to the Holy Land. G uh, good night, all the best.